Hey guys, it's Dave here from Creative Path Films and in today's video, I wanted to share with you some drone tips that might just help you get the most out of your aerial adventures. So we've previously released a video sharing 10 powerful drone shots that we utilized whilst filming our upcoming feature documentary, Against the Tide, which was filmed on the Great Barrier Reef right here in Queensland, Australia. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link up above as well as down in the description. Today, I wanted to expand on that previous video and share with you some valuable tips that might help you improve your drone shooting experience and hopefully help you to cut down on some of those learning curves if you're new to flying. All right, let's get into it. Number one, leverage your resets. The first tip I wanted to share with you is an extremely practical one, and that is to leverage your resets. Drones, as we all know, have a very limited battery life. Most consumer drones have between 20 to 40 minutes of battery life on average, at which point you have to turn the drone around, bring it back home and change the battery out. This means you really do want to make the most out of the time your drone is up in the air. So my suggestion is if you're performing a shot flying from point A, to point B and you didn't quite get the shot right and you need to have another go at it, try to avoid wasting that reset time in the middle when you're flying back to point A. Try performing the shot in reverse by flying backwards or use that flight path to get a different variation that you may find useful in the edit. My philosophy is whenever possible, try to get as much out of every moment in the air as you can. This also applies when you're bringing your drone back into land. If you can, use that as a shot as well. When we were filming out on the reef, each time I needed to bring the drone back into the catamaran that we were based off, I'd try to get a nice shot flying towards the boat that we might be able to use in the edit later. Number two, speed versus height. Something that I figured out fairly recently was that in order to get the most dynamic shots, you need to adjust the speed of your maneuvers relative to the height of your drone. The reason for this is that objects in motion that are closer to the viewer appear to move much faster than objects moving at the same speed at a distance. We've all witnessed this phenomenon. Imagine you're sitting in a moving car looking out the side window. The objects that are closest to you will appear to fly by in a blur, whereas objects near the horizon will seem to barely move at all. This is due to a phenomenon called motion parallax. Put simply, the closer an object is, the faster it moves across the surface area of your retina, or your field of vision. The further away it is, the slower it moves across your field of vision, from one side to the other. When this is applied to a drone, the drone's camera takes the place of the viewer's eye. So when you're flying close to the ground, say for example, you're about one meter or three feet high. In this example, the ground is close to the camera. So it appears to move much further and faster across the field of vision of your shot. In order to get a dynamic shot that doesn't make your audience feel sick, this means you'll need to maneuver fairly slowly. Otherwise that foreground element will zip past in a blur. The opposite is true when you're flying really high. As you increase the distance to the ground, say you're up 120 meters or 400 feet, you need to be moving much faster to achieve a dynamic shot. This means you may have to fly at full speed, which for our drone is about 40 kilometers an hour. And even then, the shot will appear to be quite slow. So the key takeaway here is to adjust the speed of your flying relative to the height of your shot to get the best results. Number three, ease in and ease out of your shots. This one is fairly self-explanatory, but it can take some practice to get right. Every time you start and end a shot, you want to try and ease in by gradually increasing up to full speed, and then ease out again by slowly releasing back on the control stick as you slow to a halt. Getting this right can take a lot of practice and a lot of accidentally jolty shots, but it's worth putting in the time to practice this skill. This tip applies to your camera's movement as well. If you're tilting your camera down to keep an object in frame as you fly over it, nothing will ruin a shot faster than the slip of a finger causing the camera to suddenly lurch. One thing that can really help with this is to fine tune the responsiveness of your controller. 
By default, the thumbsticks and control dials are very touchy. So to get good results, you should lower or dampen the responsiveness of the braking speed, the pan or your axis, and the tilt axis of the gimbal. You can do this in the menu, and it can really go a long way to help you get those nice, smooth, controlled shots. Number four, avoid micro adjustments. This is one thing that I've learned after making this mistake a lot. When flying, you'll often find yourself in a situation where you realize that your shot is ever so slightly off its line and needs to be corrected. My advice in this situation, don't. Resist the temptation. Nothing kills a shot faster than a poorly executed micro adjustment. Maybe it's just me and I'm not quite practiced enough yet to execute those really subtle, precise adjustments, but I've found that I'll get much better results by continuing through the shot, even if it's not perfect, and then simply resetting and going again if I need to. Adjusting mid shot is one of the quickest ways to take a perfectly usable shot and wreck it real fast. Number five, foreground, middle ground, and background layering. This next tip applies to any composition you create, not just drone shots. One way that you can keep your shots interesting and dynamic is to attempt to build layered shots that incorporate three elements, a foreground element, a middle ground element, and a background element. This is of course not always possible, especially if you're up flying 120 meters in the air. But if you're flying close to your subject and relatively low, you might be able to incorporate a foreground element into the bottom of your shot, which can be really effective. This layering adds different points of interest to your shot for your audience's eye to explore, which in turn makes it more interesting to watch. So whenever possible, I always like to have at least two layers, but if you can achieve all three, it's usually a winning combination. Number six, motivate your movement with emotion. This tip requires a bit of forethought when you're planning out your shots, but if you're able to imagine how you're going to use a particular shot when you get to the edit, this will allow you to be intentional and effective. I touched on this in my previous video, so it might be worth checking out if you haven't seen it already. If you're looking to use your drone shot at the beginning of your scene, as an opening shot, you may want to draw your audience's attention down to a particular part of the scene. For this moment, you may want to employ a shot that flies forwards and down towards your subject. This type of move draws your audience's focus to a singular point and the closer you get, the more details are revealed. This type of shot makes an audience feel invited into a scene. It feels warm and welcoming. The opposite also applies. If you're looking to close out a scene emotionally, then perhaps a move away from or up and away from your subject would be the most appropriate. Audiences have been conditioned from years of watching cinematic language to know that this sort of shot tends to indicate finality, that we're departing our scene and leaving our characters behind as they ride off into the sunset, so to speak. It creates an emotional distance between the audience and the subject. Learning a bit about cinematic visual language will allow you to use your drone as well as other filmmaking tools to their greatest effect, and a little can go a very long way. Number seven, reveals. My final point is to think about how you can use your drone maneuvers as either reveals or transitions in the edit. There are so many different ways that you can do this. One of my personal favorites is to fly backwards. You can fly back over a subject, slowly revealing some element to your audience as your frame slowly widens. You can also fly downwards and slowly drop your subject into the frame. You can hover your drone in place and have a moving object enter or exit the frame. Think of different or interesting ways that you can reveal elements to your audience or create transitions between scenes. Drones can be really powerful when creatively used in this way. Well, that's it guys. Those are my top drone tips to help you get the most out of your tiny flying camera. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by leaving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this on visual language and filmmaking techniques, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day guys, and we'll see you very soon in the next video.